Hi, my name is Nathan, and I'm a Senior 2 Visual Effects Artist at Beyond Effects. For today's Live Up episode, I'll be teaching you how to do this lightning effect on a skeletal mesh. For this effect, you already have to know a basic understanding of Unreal and the Niagara system. Let me just go jump right into it. The main component is using the sample skeletal mesh to set the beginning and end points. And then we're just using the beam, uh, kind of like the default beam kind of setups, just hooking them all up. So to start, uh, what we need is the sample skeleton mesh. You can search it on, it has to be on the image update. Just search for sample skeleton mesh and do it twice. And what I'm using for the settings is I'm setting it to surface triangles, setting it to random or triangles and the random evaluation to every frame since I want it different for each frame. And currently right now I've, I've made a user parameter for the skeleton mesh. Um, to hook this up just in your user export, just create a skeleton mesh, rename it. After you do it, just click and drag over, over onto your skeleton mesh. And I just did this twice. Because what we we're trying to get out of the skeletal, sample skeletal mesh is the output. So if you look at the show parameter rights, what I'm going to be using is the sample position for one of them. And I'll be using the sample normal for the tangents too. So if you look on the other one, same kind of deal, same settings as the first one. But if you notice the parameter rights will have this 001. So it kind of di differentiate between the both. Then I grab the beam inhibitor setup. And all I'm doing is for the beam starts and beam ends, I'm just hooking up the sample position. So this one is from the first one. And this, this one is from the second. And then for the tangents, I'm using the sample normals from the skeleton mesh. So this one is coming from the first one and the second one is coming from the second one. And for the tangents, actually I'm, I'm also doing a multiply vector by float. So I can have more control over the tangents. So if I kind of want to shoot out a bit more, I can increase that, whoops, like five. putting as a reasonable number as one for now and you just make sure absolute beam start and end is turned on oh and to get tangents on make sure use beam tangents is on too to control the kind of spawn rate of the effect it's using the loop duration since i'm doing bursts spawn burst the way beams are set up is the spawn burst is kind of defining kind of like the frequency of the beam. So spawn burst is the frequency. So right now I have it set to a random integer of 10 to 15. So each kind of um, burst of lightning has a range between those two. And the spawn, kind of like the spawn rate of it is controlled through this uh, loop duration. So right now it's triggering every 0 0.02 seconds. In the initialized particle, I just kept like a short lifetime and did like a bright emissive color. Added spawn beam. The important ones that I need is this ribbon link order, which I'll use to kind of like define the noise between it and the kind of like the width. So in beam width, I'm using the ribbon link order here. So I'm using, so I'm using a float from curve. It's going from 0 0.2 for the start and end, and one, one for the kind of middle part. And the curve index is using this ribbon link order. So it's basically the start point will be this, the start and end point will be this 0 0.2 value. 
and then the middle part will be a one value so it's more uh, thicker in the middle and then I'm using this scale curve to define the, the overall curve width and set particles position and this is uh, creating kind of like the noise effect you see around here so what I'm doing is I'm doing set new existing parameter I'm setting the position and then I need to convert the vector into a position So what I'm doing is add vector. What well, it's probably easy just to do position. I have to convert it back to a, a position. That's how, that's how I find the position. It's a particle position. And I'm using a random value. You can see actually I'm using particle initial position. And I'm multiplying it by float just to control the intensity of it. So multiply vector by float. Give it a random value. So just doing negative one to one. So it's kind of going both all directions. You can change it if you want to go more specific vector. And then this, let me just turn this off. This vec this float here, we control the intensity of it. As you can see from here, white now is having a lot of noise everywhere. I don't want it. I don't want it to affect the start and end points. So in the float, I say change this to a curve, and I can just make this into like a ramp up and down. Change this to a ribbon link order, and then I can increase this and the start endpoints of the beam is unaffected as you can see in this example but yeah that's the setup for uh, adding some like noise to the beams and lastly i'm, I'm just kind of like scaling alpha another point to make it more lightning kind of um, shaped is in your ribbon renderer set your curve tension to a high number if you set it low it kind of like smooths it out but yeah if this could be an effect you might want as well more of a squiggly line but by increasing it, it becomes more kind of like not as smooth it becomes more sharper and then after I have all that set up and making sure my I have a user parameter for the skeleton mesh, all you need to do is you drag and drop your analog system and using the eye drop select your skeleton mesh and it will automatically uh, connect it to your skeleton mesh. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave a comment and check out more of our live up series on the channel. Bye!